In this video, I'm gonna give you a day-by-day, 30-day walkthrough on how to create a profitable affiliate marketing blog. Each day, you'll get a small task in the process. And by the end of 30 days, your website will have traction on Google and you'll be on your way to having a profitable business online. My name is Matt Digany. I started affiliate marketing back in 2009. Affiliate marketing is, in my opinion, the best way to make money online that anyone has the ability to do. As long as you can follow a process, you can make money with affiliate marketing. Nowadays, I'm the CEO of Leadspring, a seven-figure business that is focused entirely on generating income through affiliate marketing via blogging. I just checked. Since Leadspring was started, we've built 142 websites from scratch. So at this point, I think it's safe to say that I've locked down exactly what to do in the first 30 days of starting a blog. And that's what I plan to teach you in this video. Many of the techniques I'm about to show you are taught in my course, The Affiliate Lab, but today I'm gonna open things up. Now, back when I first got started, I joined a course on affiliate marketing called The 30 Day Challenge. Their teaching format was genius. Each day, they'd give you a small task, and by the end of 30 days, you'd have a functioning affiliate blog. I'm going to do the same thing but modify it for what's working in today's affiliate blogging environment. Now the benefits of breaking things down to daily tasks are incredible. First I'm going to start you off slow so you can get some small wins under your belt and start to gain confidence. And if you commit to doing your daily tasks you'll begin to trust yourself and think hell I do have the discipline to be my own boss and pull this affiliate blogging thing off. And lastly at the end of 30 days you'll have an asset. You'll have a website with 15 well-written SEO optimized articles that Google loves. You'll have backlinks to your website which Google also loves. And ultimately, you'll start to have some traction in the form of traffic on Google, which you're gonna love. Now, the first 30 days of starting a website are hands down the most important, especially if it's your first website. I can't stress this enough. If it's your first site, you really wanna be doing all of the work yourself. By getting your hands dirty, you're gonna really understand how Google works and how search engine optimization gets you to the top of Google. Eventually, once you get the hang of things and start generating revenue, you'll start to hire people to do the work for you. But if you don't do the work yourself now, how will you know what to look for in hiring candidates? You need to walk the walk before you can talk the talk. And to me, the most important reason is because you want to start thinking about efficiency. When you first start a website, your goal is to start making money as fast as possible. As you carry out your daily tasks, you're going to start noticing ways to improve the process, to get faster, to become more efficient. And that's going to pay you rewards throughout your whole affiliate marketing career. Now, before we get started, I wanted to let you know that my course, The Affiliate Lab, is on sale 50% off this Black Friday. So if you wanna join 3,000 successful affiliate marketers and search engine professionals that are crushing it with this training, here's your chance. Just bookmark the link in the pinned comment and come back on Black Friday. Your first task in this 30-day process is to choose a niche. This is the most important step in the process, so actually I want you to take your time with it and stretch this task over three days. Your niche is the main topic of your blog. That could be anything from golfing to sports supplements to crypto. The niche you select is critical. If you select one that is too difficult, you're gonna have a hard time beating your competition. On the other hand, if you choose one that is too easy and doesn't make any money, then you'll have put all this work in only to make pennies. Here's my advice for you on selecting a niche. Choose a broad topic. Instead of making a blog about table saws, make a blog about the general topic of home improvement. At this point, you don't know if table saws are too competitive or unlucrative, but if you make a high level home improvement blog, you can switch gears to belt sanders or whatever else manly men do. Next, choose something you're interested in. For beginners, since my recommendation for you is to do the work yourself, if you're writing blog posts on a topic that you could care less about, eventually you'll go insane. After that, consider a niche in the three main essential categories, health, wealth, and relationships. These are recession-proof niches that will never go away. Avoid fad topics, fidget spinners, hoverboards, and pretty much any diet. All these niches have a lifetime. And pick a niche that is preferably monetized with an affiliate program that is not Amazon. Amazon's commissions are terrible, and they continuously get worse over time. In the affiliate lab, the fourth video is called Why We Don't Like Amazon. Do not waste your time with this program. Browse affiliate networks like ShareSale, in impact which have great products and great commissions. I also have two video recommendations for you after you finish this video. The first is my video on how to find a profitable niche for affiliate marketing which will walk you down the path of how to find a perfect niche for your new blog. The second is my best affiliate niches video where I data mined every single affiliate website that the Empire Flippers marketplace ever sold to figure out which niches have the best ROI. That is the smallest amount of time and money investment and the best rewards. I've left a link to both of these videos in the description. Next on day four, after you've selected your niche, you're going to register the domain name that your blog is gonna live on. By the way, if you want a free PDF with this calendar, you can download it by using the link in the description. When selecting a domain name, I highly recommend choosing something that's brandable. A domain name that doesn't blatantly have your niche name in it. 
For example, Google isn't named search engine website and Amazon isn't called ecommerceworld.com. Branded domains have the ability to expand into other niches and they also look more professional to your visitors. On day five, you're gonna select a hosting company, connect your domain to it and install WordPress. Your hosting is where your blog lives. All the content you write and the images and videos you upload, all of that lives on your hosting provider. For beginners, I highly recommend using SiteGround. SiteGround is both super easy to set up, but it's also super affordable. It's cheap, but not too cheap where you're gonna run into any issues. You can also register domain names with SiteGround so you can knock out day four and day five's tasks in one shot. If you use the SiteGround link in the description, you'll save some money. I'll also earn a small commission, which I promise I'll spend on complete junk. You're also gonna be setting up WordPress, the most commonly used content management system. SiteGround has a WordPress setup walkthrough as well. I left a link in the description to my affiliate marketing tutorial for beginners video, which will take you through the entire SiteGround and WordPress setup process step by step. Next on day six, you're gonna be setting up two free SEO tools, and that's Google Search. Search Console and Google Analytics. Google Search Console is like your website's diagnostic dashboard, a place where you can find out what kind of issues that Google thinks is wrong with your site. It's invaluable. Google Analytics is where you take a deep dive into the traffic that's gonna be coming into your website. You can see which pages are attracting the most traffic and how users are behaving when they come to your site. It's also invaluable. On day seven, you wanna create the core pages of your website. This includes your homepage, your about page, a contact page, and your blog. Your homepage is where you let your visitors know what your website is all about. You wanna be able to clearly communicate what people will find when they dive into your content. Also make sure to provide links to your best content, which you'll be creating soon. Your about page is where you show that there's a real person behind your blog. Who are you and why are you an expert in your niche's topic? Your contact page gives people a form to reach out to you. I use the classic WordPress plugin, Contact Form 7 to create one. Google's Quality Rater Guidelines has an entire section on the importance of having about and contact pages, so don't sleep on this. Lastly, create your blog feed. This is a chronological feed of your latest blog post, and this is gonna be the home of the content you produce very soon. On day eight, you're gonna start keyword research. Keywords are the words that someone types into Google when they're searching for something. Each article you write should be targeting specific keywords. The goal is to find keywords that have enough search volume, but low competition. In general, you want your blog to address 60% informational keywords. These are keywords like how to install a smart doorbell and how long do smart bulbs last. Then you want 40% commercial keywords like best smart home gifts for dad. The commercial keywords are the ones that will make you money. It's in these articles where you're reviewing products and inserting affiliate links for people to buy the products you're recommending. A tool that I love to use to find low competition long tail keywords is answer the public. After you finish this video, make sure to check out my SEO for beginners video where I give a walkthrough on how to find a super easy lucrative keyword best smart home candles that is perfect for newbies. Link in the description. Keyword research is an important process, so I want you to sit with it for a couple days and continue the process into day nine. You'll also be setting up a rank tracker. You're gonna be writing 15 articles in this 30-day timeline, so at the very least, find 15 keywords to target first on your blog. My recommendation is to find at least 50, though. Since you're already sitting down and doing keyword research, it's more efficient for you to get a game plan going for the next couple of months. This is called batching, and it's one of the many process improvements that you'll pick up on. Once you've completed your keyword research, take your top 10 most important keywords and plug plug them into a rank tracking software like SerpFox. SerpFox lets you track 10 keywords for free, and this is gonna allow you to monitor how fast your articles are climbing the rankings on Google over time. Day 10, it's time to start writing your first article. I recommend choosing the easiest informational keyword you can find on your keyword research list. You wanna start up by grabbing the lowest hanging fruits possible. Think of SEO like rock climbing. Once you get a foothold on the first rung and get just a baby level of traffic, you're then able to reach up to the next level and get even more traffic. Before you get started writing, there's three steps in the preparation phase. First, you wanna figure out what is the search intent for the keyword you're about to write. Second, you need to do a bit of research and create your content outline. And third, you wanna figure out the target word count of your article. Let's start with search intent. There's basically four different types of searches. Informational search queries represent when people are just looking for information, such as how-to guides on how to do this or that. For example, how long do smart light bulbs last? Then we have navigational type queries like Twitter login or Matt Diggity contact. Then transactional like buy smart bulbs or smart home store. And lastly, comparative, such as best smart bulbs or Philips Hue review. Let's say you wanted to create an article for the informational keyword, how long do smart light bulbs last? You figure out the search intent by Googling the keyword and then opening up the first few articles you see. You'll notice that the articles in the top positions are all simple articles answering the main question. There's no listicles, there's no infographics, there's no e-commerce stores. Google wants you to write a simple article, so you're gonna write a simple article. Next, you're gonna create an outline for your article. Open back up the first 
article and look at its H2 headlines. How long do smart bulbs last compared to filament? Is there more to go wrong with the smart light bulb? And are standard LED bulbs longer lasting than smart bulbs? These are all required subtopics that should be addressed in order to answer the overall question, how long do smart bulbs last? Repeat this process for the other articles at the top of Google and complete your outline. You can use the free plugin detail to speed up the process. Then you want to make sure that your article is the right length. Google knows it doesn't take a 10,000 word dissertation in order to answer how long do smart bulbs last. So look at the articles in the top positions to figure out how long the optimal length is. The detail plugin can also help you out here. At this point, you know what type of article you need to write. You have your outline and you know how much you need to write. Now it's time to start writing. I highly recommend using a tool like Surfer's Content Editor that's gonna guide your writing to include the perfect amount of essential words and phrases in your content. It does this by analyzing the websites in the top positions and provides you with a framework for writing. Please note that this is a high level overview of writing SEO optimized content. For a deeper dive, check out my video on how to write content that ranks number one on Google. Or better yet, jump on my course, The Affiliate Lab, which is on sale 50% off this Black Friday by using the link in the description. Day 11, it's now time to SEO optimize your first article. That is make the small SEO tweak so Google will love it. This includes steps like creating a title, an H1, a meta description, and a URL for your article. Run a grammar check and a spell check. Add NLP friendly answers to all the questions your content addresses. Add schema and so forth. As usual for a deeper dive, I've left a link to my on-site SEO checklist video in the description. So at this point, you've written your first article, which is a huge accomplishment in itself. I want you to start thinking about how you can do it better next time, how you can do it faster. Start to build a system for writing that you'll eventually pass off to the first writer you hire. Day 12, it's time to take that perfectly SEO optimized article and upload it to your website. Since you're using WordPress, uploading content is super easy. Make a featured image that lets people know they're in the right place right away. Use graphics to entertain the eye as people scroll down the page. Add videos to increase time on page and add lists to break up the content into bite-sized highlights. On day 13, you're gonna write your second article, SEO optimize it, and upload it to your blog. But this time you got some interlinking to do. In general, you want to link article A to article B if the two articles are relevant. And you want article B to get traffic on Google. Why is interlinking good? Because when an article about snowboarding receives a link from another article about snowboarding, Google thinks that receiving article is more topically relevant to snowboarding. It's a major ranking factor. From now on, when you upload a new article, make sure to interlink existing relevant articles to it. Also, make sure to link from it to existing relevant articles articles on your blog. Day 14, 15, and 16 are more of the same. You're going to write your third, fourth, and fifth articles, upload them to your blog, and interlink relevant articles together. Now you're picking up some steam. You're getting your reps in and you're getting better at the process. You're also getting more confident in sticking to the plan. This is going to pay off down the road. On day 17, you're going to switch gears and start looking at external link building. How can you get other blogs to link to you? The first step in link building is called link prospecting. Link prospecting is the process of determining which blogs you want to get backlinks from in the first place. Backlinks are still one of the biggest ranking factors in Google's algorithm. According to the study by Ahrefs, blogs with more links have more traffic. It's as simple as that. But where do you get your links from? Let's say you're trying to rank your article for best smart home thermostat. Would you rather have a link from the New York Times, one of the most authoritative websites in the world? Or how about the Spruce? It's not as authoritative, but it's much more relevant to the topic of home improvement. Which one would you pick? Sorry, that was a trick question. According to Google, the most authoritative and relevant article on the planet is the article ranking number one for for best smart home thermostat? The answer is always on page one. But these links might be hard to get, so here's what you do instead. You're gonna find out who linked to this article because these are the links that helped power it to number one. Toss the URL of the number one site into Ahrefs Backlink Report and download all of these domain names. Repeat it for the number two and number three sites. This is your link prospecting report. You can also do this using the free trial of Ubersuggest. Plug these websites into a tool like hunter.io to extract out a list of emails that you'll be contacting. On day 18, you're gonna start your first outreach campaign for your blog and you're gonna do it with a free tool called GMAS. GMAS is a Chrome plugin that turns your normal Gmail account into an outreach tool for free. In general, you want to use GMAS to send three emails. The first email will be the pitch. This is where you offer the blogger you're emailing something in exchange for a backlink. The second will be a follow-up email. Most outreach conversations happen on these follow-up emails, so don't ignore this step. The last email will be your final follow-up email. You can send your follow-up emails three days after the previous ones. For the pitch email, I want you to send them an offer for a guest post. Based on numerous tests, I've found that the guest posts are the best link type for a new website to receive. A steady stream of guest posts will shorten the amount of time it takes to get traction on Google. 
Here's a sample script that you can use as a guest post pitch template. Hey Bob or whatever their name is, I'm a big fan of your website and huge enthusiast of smart home modernization. I've noticed that your website hasn't addressed the topic of smart home regulation law, which will be a hot topic in the coming elections. I'm highly versed in the topic and would like to write you a guide free of charge. Just trying to get more writing experience. I look forward to hearing your reply. Regards, Matt. Kick off your outreach campaign to the list of the emails you gathered yesterday. Day 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23, you're gonna write a new article each day, eventually building up your total article count. You're starting to build a real website at this point. You're kicking ass and you should be proud. Just remember, you have a new task to stack on. Monitor your inbox. You're probably getting some replies to your outreach campaign. Day 24, now that you learned about what it takes to do an outreach campaign, you're gonna take what you learned and launch a new one. The fact of the matter is that outreach takes practice. And you've got some experience now. You've seen the replies and you've seen what people are looking for. This time around, make a slight adjustment to the way you link prospect in your outreach templates. Try reaching out to smaller blogs this time. Try a different email pitch. Refine your process. Days 24 to 29, you've seen this before. This is your final content stretch to get your ultimate goal of achieving 15 articles in a month. You've done it. Go buy yourself an ice cream, a beer, or a bag of sweet, sweet crack. On day 30, it's time to check in and see your progress. Open up Google Search Console and you should start seeing an increase in impressions. Impressions are the amount of times that Google shows your website in the search results. And at this point, you should start seeing your impressions on the rise. While what you really care about is clicks, actual traffic to your blog, don't be too worried if clicks are minimal at this point. SEO takes time and if you stick to the plan, you're gonna start getting more and more traffic and eventually making money. Also, open up your rank tracker. You're likely gonna find keywords that you used to rank 80th for now on page two of Google. This is progress and you should be proud. Now this was a high level crash course in the first 30 days of starting a blog. And of course, there's more to this process, the devil's in the details. This Black Friday, you can jump in my course and community, the Affiliate Lab for 50% off by using the link in the description. See you on the other side.